which you might find helpful. Please help me welcome Steve Myers. It's all about the brain. It's all about the brain. Steve Myers. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, the brain. Everything we do is with our brain. You ordered your food today. You looked at the list. You read the list. You recalled other eating experiences. You made your choices. You had your expectations. Your saliva was triggered. All about your brain. You find a penny in the parking lot. It's heads up. I pick it up. I think it will give me good luck. I think of all the areas I want good luck. You see a child. He's sad. You find a kind word. that will lift his heart up again. The brain lets you do all these things. Everything we do goes through our brain. This is one organ in our body which we often take for granted. Dr. Uh, um, Daniel Amin, Amin of the Amin Clinic, he said, when your brain works right, your life works right. When your brain is troubled, you're more likely to have trouble in your life. I'm here to talk today about some things we can do, taking care of our brain, exploring our brain, and to keep asking why. This brain we have, it, it's developing in our bodies since from birth, we're in utero, we're already, the brain's already learning about its environment according to what comes through the mother, what the diets are, the hydration, the temperature, it's learning the mother's voice, all the way until you're 25 years old, that, that brain is developing, taking its form. You can still learn afterwards, of course, or you wouldn't remember where we parked today. <laughs> but that main development is in those time periods. <clears throat> and of all the time in your life to be more brain sensitive, it would be in those 25 years. Conversely, that's the time when we are probably most risk hazard in our life. <laughs> Let's talk about injuries. I took quite a shot in the head there coming up here. We have people as a profession who will do that. Why would that be a, 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 a risk? Why is that an at-risk behavior? Why does that guy have a hard time getting insurance? Because the brain is a soft organ. Its consistency as you see it, is usually in the, a classroom or on a TV show, it's usually, for the brain, it's been sitting in formaldehyde and it's kind of rubbery and hard. And, but in our living environment, it's softer. I've heard it described as soft butter. I tend to visualize more of tofu. Perhaps that's a culinary preference of my own. <laughs> but it's a soft <coughs> organ, and it's living in a protective shell that does a really good job. That, that shell keeps it in place by these very sharp ridges, the ridges throughout the brain that holds it in place. So when you take an impact, like a boxer, you get two brain attacks. One is it gets shoved over to the other side of your brain, and if the skull is damaged at the point of impact, there's additional trauma. And the other is when it slams back into place against that, those ridges, they can get a laceration. Laceration has got loss of fluid and you get the swelling going on. And I don't know, it's harder to hit someone in their head. Usually their brain doesn't ooze out anywhere. That swelling just, there's no place to go. It just constricts itself. And it can cause loss of memory sections of the brain can die because of that. Concussions are serious business, yet they happen. And fairly routinely in some, in some uh, sporting events, these people are professionals. Now, they're professionals because we pay them a lot of money to take a lot of risks, which looks really neat. And we seduce them with celebrity status but they're out there, boxers, or football players, <coughs> taking in injuries that are maiming. And more and more now, as the <coughs> generations move on, we see the effects of this. The football players are doing studies now, how later in life. Uh, you, typically, the, the stars don't manage their money really well, and they're, and they're broke. And a lot of that's because they don't think as well. A lot of times, uh, are, are the, the greatest boxer of all time. Muhammad Ali has spent probably spent the last 30 years of his life suffering Parkinson's disease. I, I 
heard a comment by an older gentleman in his 70s. He said, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those, those thrills of the youth, they, they better be good because you're going to keep paying for them for a long time. It was William Shakespeare who made the comment, the brain is the soul's fragile dwelling place. And hundreds of years of science have only come to prove that more so. Feed the brain. Feed it well. Eat a healthy diet. The brain takes up 2% of your body weight, but it consumes 20 to 30% of your calories. It's a little firehouse. It's like the CPU on your computer takes up the most memory, heat, makes the most heat. That's what we got to concentrate on. Give it what it needs to be healthy. Healthy diet, exercise, blood flow, uh, oxygen. When we do things that compromise these healthful elements, these required elements, the brain's really fragile too. When we go without air, it's the brain sections that die first. We have a, a very delicate, as, as Shakespeare said, a fragile member that often gets treated kind of roughly, kind of flippantly. Some people even take on habits that introduce pollutants or they introduce chemicals that, re, uh, that remap the way the brain chemically balances itself and form dependencies on things outside. So our, our health beyond what we eat also comes from being social, having hobbies, having healthy anxiety. Anxiety, you know, in the wrong extreme can, can be paralyzed. But in the right dosage, it can say, hey, this activity is a little higher risk. I'm going to sidestep that, that offer, that invitation. So a little anxiety to be protecting of what's our most valuable organ. It's healthy. One thing that can get in inside our head is our own thoughts. And those can be really <coughs> influential. The happy thought, like we had a happy thought today, is good. It bounces around, you make connections, you refer to things, you relate it to other experiences in your life. But a, a, a negative thought can do the same kind of connecting and in, ingraining a negative way of looking at things. When you're negative, you tend to shrink up, tighten up. Circulation goes down, just like your body physically does on the outside. Your brain's doing it. And chronically, it'll start shutting down sections of itself. Poor brain health reduces your, the health of the one organ that lets you become all you ever wanted to be. Why would you put him at risk here? This little organ, he also benefits a lot from rotation. Rotation, is that like a colon cleansing that on the high, high spin? <laughs> no. A rotation is, change what it's doing. It tends to build up ruts. If you do the same thing over and over, respond the same way over and over, it tends to get ruts. It gets really efficient what that thing you're doing over and over, and everything else kind of falls to the wayside. Being eclectic in our activities, in our conversations, in what we spend time contemplating, is a very healthy thing for our mind. Our mind wants to be busy. It wants to have projects. It wants to, it wants to be solving things. If we don't feed it good projects, good things to solve, good <coughs> applications, it'll grab bad ones just to be doing something. It'll grab, uh, you take the position of spectator. We'll get used to watching. it. He'll sit back and watch people on television, watch reality shows that get close <coughs> to life, that Leave it sitting and spectating. The ability for our brain to ask, ask about itself. Why do we have a brain? Why are things as they are? This is a, a huge advancement we have. This frontal lobe gives us over dogs and cats and, and gorillas. We, we question things. We foresee our mortality. <coughs> we have a chance to try to optimize the time we do have. Great part of the optimizing is taking care of this guy up here. He is our connection, both to humanity around us, our connection to what the divine, our creator, 
and the connection to our own essence.